Hey YouTube, you have Leonard here. Bring guys and gals, rent a girlfriend, Kanojo Okudishimasu. We're back after one week, chapter 234. So I had a pretty strong reaction, as you guys know, from last week's chapter 233, where honestly, I was very frustrated. And to say that I'm not still kind of frustrated would be a lie. But this chapter, we're starting to take positive steps in the right direction, which is good as we address Kazuya and his depression at this point, Yai Morty's back in the story and she's going to, as she normally does, get things moving along for both characters. And we get a little bit of insight into Chizuru. So it won't be a particularly long review, but I'm going to just touch upon these three things in order. We're gonna start off with Kazuya and him meeting Yai Morty again. And she's fresh off her India trip and she's still as random as always, I'm not going to lie. Um, but in this particular chapter, we really see how bad Kazuya is, like what state he's in. We do get confirmation, as I kind of said before in the 233 review, but the whole Hawaiian trip took place Labor Day weekend, so September, and about three months have passed. So that means in terms of the ski, wherever we're on the stream of time, we can argue right now somewhere around like end of November, possibly even early December. Again, three months have officially passed. And Kazuya is in full depression mode. He hasn't cleaned his room. He hasn't left his room. It's fair to say that, and we end up getting confirmation of this at the end of the chapter, Chizudu is still at her apartment. I don't understand how three months pass by and they never see each other, but it could be a combination of Chizudu actively A, avoiding Kazuya, B, when he goes over to the apartment, she just doesn't respond, and C, Kazuya after a while because of depression, he just hasn't really left his apartment. Outside of maybe getting like groceries or things like that, he probably just hasn't really left and therefore he hasn't seen Shizudu and she's going out of her way to make sure that she doesn't appear and if he, she does, she stays in her room. So I don't know, all that's very rough. And Yai Morty is like visibly like concerned because she's just like, what happened to you? And then when she hears the story, kind of like all of us, she's just like, well, she kissed you, she obviously likes you. But then it's like, why has three months gone by and nothing happened? And she gives him honestly like, a really good pep talk. And I have this on panel on the side here. But I think it's really interesting the fact that she says, and I agree with this, she's just like, what are you saying? Are you saying that mizuhara san kissed you and it meant nothing to her? Or are you telling me that you're fine with mizuhara san being a slut who <laughs> throws kisses like the Kamehameha's? Um, honestly, that was like my favorite quote of the entire chapter. But it just goes to show you that again, Yai Modi is being rational and she's saying like, it's impossible of everything that took place on this trip that Chizudu doesn't like you. It's literally impossible. And I think it's good that she said that and Kazuya realizes this as well. Like he's heard this enough times now between her and between Kuri. But the big issue goes back to again, how Chizudu has been handling this whole entire situation. Is the fact that at the end of the day, she didn't communicate with him. She's run away. It's been three months. She leaves him on red. She doesn't answer the rental stuff. And I get why she's doing that, by the way. Um, but all that leads to a very conflicted Kazuya. And even Yai Mori is just like, I don't really understand what's happening here. And I need to get to the bottom of this. Because the way that Chizu's acting now versus how she clearly was acting during the wine strip are a complete conflict with each other. And again, that just goes back to now. I'm going to focus briefly on Chizudu. Chizudu is still at the apartment. Chizudu is pursuing her acting, but she continues to not talk to Kazuya. Why? I would assume that at the end of the day, Chizudu continues to run away and she doesn't want to face Kazuya. Her emotions are still a wreck and I firmly believe this everybody and I said that for those on stream as well. If, if Chizudu was left her own devices and Yai Mori doesn't come through or maybe the future Sumi doesn't come through, Honestly, I really believe that Chizudu, and this would be to her own detriment, would not contact Kazuya and she would go about her life and she would just live with the regret. Chizudu screams the type of individual who will make decisions and those decisions are going to hurt her, but she's going to rationalize the fact that this is for the better. I deserve this. I shouldn't be with him. I shouldn't do this and that. And she vict it's not victimizing, it kind of is, but it's not. But she's going to continue to rationalize why she can't talk to Kazuya, even though she wants to. And we see it in this chapter, like even her shopping, her picking up a carrot, she sees Kazuya's face in the carrot. She clearly cares about him. She clearly still thinks about him even after three months. But because of a combination of pride, her own self-esteem, immaturity, you name it, 
she can't take the next step of actually addressing Kazuya because she's still completely... I don't even know how to describe this. She's still completely like not sure what she wants to even do. And by that, her lack of decision making leads to indecision on her part. And again, she refuses to end up confronting him. So all in all, Chizu really needs a push. And that's why I'm kind of happy that Yai Mori in this chapter, she decides to take an aggressive approach on behalf of Kazuya and on behalf of Chizu because she cares about both of them. And she's just like, I need to get to the bottom of this. And she confronts Chizu, and it just so happens that again, she goes to ring the doorbell, Chizu's coming back from grocery shopping, and then I was just like, wait, wait, wait a second, what, she's still there? Because I, I still can't fathom the fact that her and Kazi have not seen each other, like, one thing not to talk, I get that, but to not even unintentionally by coincidence see each other when they go to the same school and they live next door to each other is just wild to me. I mean, I live next door with my neighbors, I don't talk to them, but even just casually going out, every now and then I'll see my neighbors. <laughs> For better or for worse, I will see my neighbors. Um, <laughs> but anyway, so all in all, that's kind of like where I stand on this chapter right now. We're getting some decent progression. And I guess in terms of like my predictions for next chapter, I'm just kind of curious to see what Yai Mori is going to be able to accomplish. I don't think her by herself will be able to convince Chizuru to actually talk to Kazuya. But I think through means of her dialogue with Chizuru, Yai Mori is going to get the full picture that Chizuru is actively avoiding Kazuya and it's because she has those feelings. She's going to confront Chizuru about that. Chizuru's going to shy away, of course. And I think that Yai Mori will be able to convey to Kazuya not to give up. And I think that Sumi or somebody else, maybe even Mommy for all we know, will end up coming through as a result. I, I, I know, holding, Mommy be wild, or even Ruka, I don't know. But someone, most likely Sumi, will come through and give Chizuru that additional push she needs to reconcile her own feelings, because until she comes to a conclusion how she feels, she can't confront Kazuya. I've been very on board with that. So there we go. There's the mommy memes. <laughs> you know, get mommy out of my chat. <laughs> the emotes coming strong. Um, so before I end this, everybody, I'm just glancing at chat right now that I have on Twitch. Of course, everyone follow me on Twitch, link in the description box down below. Uh, yo, Heavy Storm, welcome. Welcome to the stream. Maybe Minu will get in touch with Ruka and Cone. They will see him. Maybe not Cheese. It's possible. I'm really curious to see what Yai Mori is going to do. There are a few different things that she could definitely do to try and push Cheese to do. By the bare minimum, I think that she's going to have a very frank and upfront conversation with her. And Yai Mori, we know she's not one to mince words. So at the end of the day, I don't think she's going to be afraid to tell Cheese to do like it is. Like, hey, you're running away. Hey, I know woman to woman, I know that you like Kazuya. So what are you doing? Why are you avoiding him? Like, what are you doing here? How do you feel about like Kazuya Senpai? So I would love to see how that conversation goes down. Would love to see it. And then again, if we guess one of the other characters in regards to a mommy, a Ruka, more likely a Sumi, to then give Chizu the added push, the added support that she needs to make its decision, I think that would be great. And one last thing, this is a minor rant, but I'm just going to again dig in again on what I said last week. I truly, truly hate it. We talked about this on this Twitch side as well. I really hate that with these three months, there's so many dynamic things that have been probably happening or should have been happening that we don't get the chance to actually see in real time. And to me, that's very disappointing. It, it just really is. That's the one thing that even as this goes on, I still feel very annoyed about because between the Kibay stuff, don't know what's happening to Kibay. What's Ruka been doing during all this time? What's the things left off of the family? How they feel about Kazuya? Do they not question the fact that Kazuya and Chizudu have seemingly not been in contact for like three months? Because we don't regularly, especially now, go me. I mean, they were doing stuff pretty often, or they would just casually like just come by. So it's just like the whole world froze over the past three months, and that's just not realistic to me. And I hate the fact that. That's the route that went for the shock value of it's been three months since they've spoken. Again, a montage, anything could have been good to at least give us some little glimpses in what's been happening. And I'm still upset about that, but it is what it is. Don't you dare touch Sumi, Arthur. <laughs> oh man, I, I, yeah, Sumi's too pure for the world. Um, by the way, I have to catch up on the Sumi novel. Not the Sumi novel, the Sumi manga. <sighs> 
Yeah, if we had a visual novel, right now I feel we're on the bad route. Right now we're on the bad route and we're teetering, potentially salvaging ourselves, but in the visual novel sense, we're on like the bad route, everybody. Rakazi ends up depressed. Chizu ends up living her life out, not happy. She's gonna marry Umi and she's gonna be unhappy. Kazi's gonna pull through with his bar or something. He's gonna be running the store and they're gonna see each other by chance and they're gonna just regret and think about what could have been. 100 sound the story's going. <laughs> That's literally, that is the bad ending. Not even gonna lie. <laughs> it was just like, oh no, oh no. I'm just saying like, that's the bad ending route that we could end up getting. That would honestly be the most depressing. It'd be so realistic too, but that'd be the definition of bad ending. And I would be depressed. And you know what's the most depressing is the fact that you guys know this, everybody, that realistically in real life, that's how things be going down in real life. If you don't take the opportunity to seize what you have in front of you, sometimes once the moment is passed, it's done. It just is. And in this situation, they should be thankful that they have friends who are trying to push them along. But realistically speaking, if they don't do something, that's where the story in real life would end up going. They'd go about their separate ways. They'd always regret what they didn't do. Even though they clearly could have been together, they didn't take the active steps to do so. And as a result, they life goes on. But man, ugh. Well, sorry to end that on a depressing note, everybody. It is what it is. But <laughs> on that note, for those on the YouTube side of things, let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below. How did you feel about this chapter? Uh, how do you feel about Chizu the way she's acting? As I said, it's very clear that Chizu do has feelings for Kazuya still, she's still thinking about him, but it's that indecision that prevents her from wanting to do anything, and that's going to be her undoing unless somebody can help her to realize that and give her the added push that she needs to make a decision. So with that, I'm going to end it here. Like the video if you liked the video, subscribe and like my content, it's greatly appreciated as always. And with that, I'm Leonard and I'm out. Take care everybody and have a good one. Peace.